Hello and welcome. This is Larry from Kiwi Labs Pickleball. Uh, today is all about paddle face material. Um, we're going to get a tiny bit more in depth, but basically if you're kind of shopping for your either first, I guess, real paddle or upgrading that maybe the Amazon paddle you got and you're ready to take it to that next level, this video is for you. We're just going to give you the quick um, quickish. I'll try to keep this as uh, concise as I can. Um, we're just going to go over, you know, different composite types. We're going to talk about the graphite, and then we're going to really dive into carbon fiber because well, that's kind of what I've been studying and know the most about. So it's also the biggest trend in pickleball right now. So what are you getting into? How come some carbon fiber paddles you can find for, I don't know, like, you know, 90 to 100, but some are charging $200. So um, what justifies those prices? Should I just stick with something like a graphite paddle or, you know, where do I start? Well, this video is for you. Um, so let's dive into it. So not in this video, but in an upcoming video, we'll get more in depth with leather. We'll get more in depth with picking out like, you know, paddle thicknesses and all that kind of stuff, like, uh, lengths, widths, uh, what's for what player. We'll get into that stuff later, but today is all about just uh, the materials used because I think that's what people have the most questions about. You you see a lot of people like, oh, you gotta go, um, you gotta go with uh, graphite, you gotta go with carbon fiber. But why are people telling you to go with one and what are the benefits of each? So that's kind of what we really want to focus on today. And I'm going to explain this of my journey of pickleball, where I started how I've came across all of these paddles and, and, you know, what was my journey? Because I think I follow, you know, average players journey and I'm, not, you're not hearing from like a professional pickleball player. I know I don't look like one cause I'm not, I'm just a guy who really likes mostly pickleball technology. I'm diving into that stuff so much lately. And also I just obviously love the game. Okay. <laughs> Let's get into this. So the first thing we have here is like the cheapest, entry point paddle you can get the Nui Pipo. They actually do make nicer paddles now. Um, they've grown a little more high end. Uh, high end is, is hard to say, but they're getting better. They're so popular on Amazon that if you're looking for your first paddle, you really, there's nothing wrong with them. Like some people are very like stingy. They're kind of, um, I don't know. A lot of people I talk to are very exclusive in their paddle choices, and that's good. You should know what you like, but I have no problem saying, yeah, just get, if you don't know what you want to do yet, you don't even know if you like the sport, you'll probably like the sport. Just spend, you know, 20 bucks or whatever, get a Nui Pipo or whatever the Amazon brand is near you and make sure you like it and then invest because I'm really glad I went that way because you don't learn what you like and don't like about a cheaper paddle to help you make that decision into that next level. I just undid the grip here to kind of show you the overall construction of a paddle. Now, this inside is our uh, standard honeycomb plastic um, core that's gonna be in basically every paddle until you get to the higher end ones where it's still gonna have this, but it might utilize some other technologies. Um, again, we'll get to that when we talk about the carbon fiber paddles, but just so you understand how basic these things are, it's just a sheet of laminate, the core, and then another sheet of laminate, and then obviously this part has the grip on it, but this usually travels throughout the entire paddle. Um, these cheaper ones will use, uh, the, the face is only gonna go to about here and then it cuts off. Um, whereas higher ends will keep this face all the way through to have a, give you a little more structure. So these tiny little things seem like kind of small, but they do add up into a higher quality product as you go up. So that's all we'll say about these cheaper ones. They're, they're all, all I want, really want to say is like, don't be afraid if you're looking for your first paddle to just get a cheap one, make sure you like it and then see what you like and don't like. And honestly, like a paddle like this, it's it's the biggest downside I think is more so you don't have any control, you don't get a lot of spin. Oh, it's my dog, Teddy. <laughs> um, but you do get a decent amount of power, like because it's like a harder composite um, and it's thinner, most of them are gonna be thinner. You actually can kind of wail on them a little bit. So you get, you get a good feel for the sport with them. So that's enough we'll say about that. Let's move up 
in the world with some higher end composites. So this is a head Radical Elite. It's about a 60 to $70 paddle. This was my uh, first, I'd say like real paddle, like a non-Amazon brand one. And I still like this. I still use this a lot. It holds up really well. Like this looks brand new. Um, so it doesn't take a beating a lot. Um, but it's very smooth. So that's what happens when you're looking for these composites. Um, I'd say overall it, it carries a nice sweet spot throughout the thing, but um, you really lack the texture on this. And it's a good medium ground. I think that's why it made such a good second paddle for me, because it was basically just like a nicer version of this because it perfectly kind of toes the line. It's a little bit thicker, so you get a little more absorption, a little more control, and you can keep the power because it's such a hard surface here. It transfers a lot more power, at least from my experience. Um, there's a light, very, very light texture, but this is just a, a, a composite at the end of the day, which is a, a plastic. And it is focused on power. I would say both the composites and graphite are where you want to stay if you are all about trying to get some smackaroos in there because I, we'll get to it. Sorry, I'm stumbling a little bit. But when we get to the carbon fiber, you will start to notice that's where you lose a little bit of power but gain a little more control. Um, okay, so anyways, the last thing I'll say about this paddle is it's fine. I just, um, I don't know. I found myself the second I upgraded to this wishing I went higher. Um, now on the same level, we'll talk about graphite. Now the biggest downside that people have with graphite right now is the sound. Um, there's some great graphite paddles, especially this Z5 from Onyx is very, very popular. A lot of people are using this. It's got some texture. They put some decent texture on it. It's not, it's very small though, uh, more than the composite ones I was showing you. And the graphite actually gives you some power. Again, good for some smackaroos. Um, now the downside though, That's the sound of a, let, let, let me go through real quick. You can hear. So here's the sound on the composite. Still also loud, but you can tell it's probably a little quieter, but the graph lights are harsh. And then you go to something like carbon fiber. I think, and, and it might be hard because I'm so close to the camera and I'm not using a great microphone, but what the experience is, is very harsh, kink, tink, it's probably where you get the dink from. And then this is a nice more clunk. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense to you. A dink versus a clunk. Anyways, I love this paddle. It's so much fun. Um, personally, if you're looking for that next one to upgrade to, um, and you were using an Amazon or a cheaper paddle that is a harder surface and you got really used to that uh, power play and you like smacking it up, <laughs> smacking it up. Um, this is a good second paddle. I would choose a graphite one uh, before a composite one. Now, there, and I really can't think of a reason why I would stay pick a composite at all <laughs> there there's got to be some reasons that i can't find but other than it being a good all-round paddle um i don't know i would go right towards uh, a graphite for your like second paddle um i really enjoyed this one especially but again people hate that high pitch sound that you get from a graphite paddle um, and it doesn't have to be the z5 there's plenty of great graphite paddles engage has some really popular ones um electrum has an awesome graphite one but they also make some carbon fiber paddles now this is where i've done most of my research that's the paddles that we sell we're particularly talking about the slice here which utilizes similar features to um carbon crbn very popular pickleball paddle company uh, eula they're very popular in the carbon space. Dyed them. <laughs> uh, those guys are, are big names in the carbon fiber technology realm. And here's where things get tricky with surfaces because 
I mentioned earlier in the video, you can get anywhere from a, you know, $100 paddle to a, you know, higher end like this or carbon that range in the 150 to 200 way, uh, world. And at the end of the day, there's tons of carbon surfaces out there. Um, the, the popular industry standard right now, what this uses, it's what most uh, paddles are using is a T700 carbon fiber. Um, maybe you can see the texture a little bit too if I bring that up. This is my personal paddle, so it's a little bit scratched and dinged, but um, these are what you're going to see a lot more of. But again, there's variations. Some cheaper Amazon companies are simply taking a paddle like this one and just putting a carbon fiber, fiber cloth over it. It's going to end right here and you get what you get, which is fine. I'm not knocking that by any means, but that's where you can get the price point down to selling a sub hundred dollar carbon fiber paddle. So they do exist, but they also might be using a cheaper carbon fiber uh, material. So the T700 is usually more expensive to produce and it gets better results. It lasts longer, it gets optimal spin. There's some people like um, Gearbox is using a 3K carbon fiber, um, which personally I haven't actually used. So I can't really tell you if that's any better than the T700, but the T700 is what I would look for in a paddle just because it's becoming more of the standard. Um, but as I was saying, you could still have T700 and it's just for the face, which again is fine, but you don't necessarily get that strong durability uh, that you do when you look at someone like Carbon or, or us here at Kiwi Labs, where we've taken it to the next level with, um, you've probably heard this buzzword, a thermoformed uh, pickleball paddle. And what that means is it is using one complete piece. So I'm going to take off my grip on the slice here to show you what that means. And so, so hopefully you can see that. There's no exposed, every other panel I've shown you, including a lot of carbon fiber ones on the market, when you open the handle, you're gonna see directly through to the core. Where these thermoforged uh, unibody is another word that people are using you're gonna see that this sidewall, this actually continues up throughout the entire paddle, as well as the face continues down the entire width of the handle, making it much stronger. There's some great videos online, I'm sure you've seen of people trying to break like a carbon over their knee and it's not going anywhere because they use the same sort of technology. And it also, at least we're doing this, I can't speak for everyone, but uh, these nicer paddles are gonna take advantage of a uh, foam injection throughout the edges, uh, which helps fill in that gap, create a better sweet spot, and again, durability. So, I know what you're thinking, Larry, I thought we were talking about the benefits of a uh, of each material. Well, I guess I should get to that. So the reason why you would look for something carbon fiber, and if you're jumping to carbon fiber, all of that's to say is, I recommend going with the works. You might as well dive in on a reliable paddle that's gonna, gonna be, ex you know, it's gonna be more expensive, but if you're, if you're breaking the $100 threshold, you might as well get something that you love and is proven, right? But why do that? Why move to carbon fiber? Well, you start to actually lose some of that power we were talking about in the graphite and the composites, but you're gaining control. You're gaining a whole new world of being able to spin the ball. Um, a good reference I would think is uh, if you're a ping pong player and you're, and you're used to being able to spin a ping pong ball, you almost get the exact same control with a carbon fiber paddle. At least I've found a similar, if I had to relate it. Um, you also get, and I can't speak for everyone, but something like carbon and something like the slice here, you do get um, often, especially these thermoforged carbon fiber um, uh, paddles, you're getting a thicker paddle and combined with the foam, combined with everything we talk about, you're getting a nice soft absorption when the ball hits. It lets you uh, absorb it and focus on uh, placing the ball instead of feeling like this guy, you're feeling everything once it hits 
and you if you don't have your shot lined up you can go where there's a lot more of a forgiving spirit with a carbon fiber paddle you can absorb it direct it spin it and uh personally i found as a rookie-ish player um having a nicer absorbing paddle like a carbon fiber paddle it's really helped my game uh at least you've seen the paddles that i've used and and there's probably some in between but I found that to be pretty nice to go to the carbon fiber level. All this to say is there's no wrong answer. There, The market is flooded with paddles. Um, that's kind of what makes pickleball so cool right now. There's so many new things to try out there. Um, there's, there's just a whole world of finding the perfect paddle for you. Now, like I said, in the next video, we'll talk about the benefits of shape, uh, thickness, and we can get into that stuff a little more. But I just wanted to sit down and talk about paddle faces. <laughs> I, it's just something that I've been really interested lately, so I thought I'd chat about it. Hopefully this video wasn't too long and you don't hate me or, 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 or anything because I stole 20 minutes of your day, but um, I enjoy these videos. So if you enjoy uh, talking about pickleball, drop some comments and you can tell me, hey, Larry, that was wrong. Or Larry, uh, I liked this. I hated this. That'll help me grow as I'm making more of these videos for you guys. Um, and if you want to learn more about Kiwi Labs, it's linked in the description, or you can go to kiwipickleball.com. Uh, these are still uh, in pre-order. Fair warning, these aren't even on the market yet. Uh, but you can stay informed. You can submit uh, your email there. We, we're doing monthly giveaways starting in April. Um, so also check us out on our socials because that's where we'll announce winners. We're giving away, I mean... Just for starters, we've got some fun stickers and stuff. I don't know if you see all those. We've got paddles we're going to start giving away. We've got hats. We've got some other gear. So if any of that sounds interesting, uh, come join the club. <laughs> We'd love to have you. Already a, a huge thank you to the guys who've already reached out. That is crazy that you guys have, are already showing interest in us because we're new and we're not afraid to admit that we're new and uh, we're going to grow together. We're doing this thing. But what we are is passion passionate about pickleball and passionate about making our perfect paddle like i said we took all the things that we like in pickleball to smoosh them into to one paddle so far so if that sounds any bit interesting come join us we'd, we'd be happy to see you and with that oh, i've been talking too long so let's end this video <laughs> see you guys bye